This episode is brought to you in part by the American Homebrewers Association, host of HomebrewCon, publisher of Zymergy Magazine, and organizer of the National Homebrew Competition. Learn more about the AHA's activities or become a card-carrying member like me. Visit homebrewersassociation.org today. That's homebrewersassociation.org today. Welcome to Basic Brewing Radio for Thursday, January 17th, 2019. I'm James Spencer. Here at Basic Brewing Radio, we're all about home brewing. This week, we thumb our noses at seasonal propriety and taste a flight of five monster cereal beers. Will they be drinkable? And will the cereal actually make a difference in the flavor of the brews? Stay tuned. If you go to basicbrewing.com, you can find archives of our audio and video shows, our DVDs, our brewers' logbooks, and other basic brewing gear, including our tie-dye silicone pint and our basic brewing rainbow shirt. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Basic Brewing and find our show page on Facebook. We have a cool Basic Brewing app on iTunes and Amazon.com, and we're found all over the place where fine podcasts are served up. And they say if you leave us a a a, a, a rating on the iTunes and, and maybe leave a nice comment, uh, they tell us that, that new listeners will find us that way. I don't know. Don't know if it's true. <laughs> but we sure sure enjoy reading the comments. Uh, if you want to support us financially, check out patreon.com slash basic brewing. And thanks to everybody who's helping us out. If you go to patreon.com slash basic brewing, you can see a long list of stuff that you can access if you sign up as a supporter. Uh, this past Monday, I released to the general public our basic brewing video episode showing uh, how the beers for our hop sampler series are brewed. Be sure to check that out on our podcast feed uh, in our app or on our YouTube channel. Uh, Steve and I got together last night and tasted the uh, sampler for audio, and you can hear that next week. Uh, Not to spoil anything, but I thought the second round of tasting last night was different from when uh, Drew and I tasted for the video podcast. Was it that the beers had aged a little more, Uh, you know, about a week more? Or was it that the uh, second tasting was blind and we didn't know which hop was hop? Well, which which hop was hop? Well, we knew they all were hop, but we didn't know which was which. <laughs> so you know, it could be that uh, you know, in knowing what the hops were, maybe maybe my uh, impressions were colored a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, very tasty and very interesting results. You'll hear that next week. I got an email about the hop sampler recipe from listener Stephen. Stephen says, I started copying your small hop sampler so I can familiarize myself with different hop varieties. Thanks for the great idea. You're welcome, Stephen. Uh, I had one question concerning the volume of wort. I used three quarts of water and one pound of dry malt extract, but my one-gallon jugs aren't completely full. I would say that they are approximately three-quarters full. Just wanted to know if that's what you're experiencing as well. Yep, it's about, it's sounds about right, Stephen. Mine are about three quarters of the way full too. Uh, of course, you know that's handy because you need some headroom for fermentation. But uh, you'll find that uh, if you rack carefully, if you bottle carefully, you'll wind up with a little over a six packs worth of beer. Uh, about a about a six pack and a hydrometer uh, sample jar, or at least mine. <laughs> the size of mine. Yours may be bigger, uh, but uh, that's about the volume that you'll get. Uh, Jordan on Twitter wrote, Thanks for the inspiration. Doing my uh, doing a couple of my own one-gallon hop sampler batches following your method. Falconer's Flight, Pacific Jade, and Green Bullet. Mmm. That sounds like, uh, that's, that sounds like fun. Falconer's Flight we've done, and Green Bullet... Uh, we've done, but I don't think we've done Pacific Jade, so maybe we got to put that on the list. So I'm glad to hear that some of y'all are trying the uh, small batch sampler method, and I'm, I'm hoping that you're having as much fun uh, as we have been having with uh, those. Uh, the hardest part is remembering what hops you've tasted and what they tasted like. <laughs> so I may have to go back and make some sort of, sort of a chart or a database or something to, um, you know, kind of keep track of all this information that uh, we were gathering. Uh, for some of, or for those of you who uh, submitted stories for the annual disaster show, 
I'm still collecting mailing addresses for your goodie bags uh, that will go out from Steve's Brew Shop and Basic Brewing. Uh, I sent out a second email this week to those that I'm still missing. So if you haven't received a letter from me asking for your address uh, and your story was on the show, check your spam folder or better yet, just email me your mailing address to james at basicbrewing.com. And be sure to use the same account that you used when you sent in the story originally, just to avoid confusion. And I'm sorry it's taken so long to get my act together and sending those prizes out. Uh, it, we appreciate your sending in those stories. Uh, let's talk about our sponsors, Desiree and Dave from High Gravity in Tulsa. You may remember last week I said if you're looking at getting a high gravity single vessel system, You'll want to jump in before the end of January. The single vessel systems with the Warthog controllers are currently on sale for 200 bucks off, and they have been for quite a while, but that sale is going to end uh, at the end of the month. So if you want a, say, a 240-volt brew-in-a-bag system like I have with the versatile Warthog controller, go to highgravitybrew.com and sign up before the end of January to save some serious cash. You know I love my system. Uh, electric brewing takes the pain out of propane, especially when you're brewing all grain. You know, dialing in the strike temps and, and, and holding mash rests at temperature is super easy. And controlling your boil is as simple as dialing in that digital control. And if, and if you want something else, you know, if you want to go, you know, something else other than a single vessel system, high gravity still has a wide variety of electric systems from single vessel, two vessel, three vessel, and from five gallons to two barrels, and uh, you can save seventy-five bucks off your electric gear purchase by using the code EBC75BB. So head on over to HighGravityBrew.com and tell them thanks for supporting Basic Brewing Radio. That's HighGravityBrew.com. Okay, let's head over to Steve's Brew Shop to taste some monster cereal beers. Steve Wilkes, welcome back to Basic Brewing Radio. Thanks, James. Introduce you first because we're in the back of Steve's Brew Shop. Yes, we're the elite meet to greet and eat and <laughs> buy hops. <laughs> you ran out of rhymes. Well, it's because we've already done a mead show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> iambic, uh, iambic pentameter is right out. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and joining us again, my son Drew Spencer. Good to be here again. And our friend Jamie Conway. Thanks, James. Feels like I never left. <laughs> the, well, let's do the time warp again. We've got, uh, speaking of time, this is a very timely show. We've got uh, beers brewed with uh, monster cereals, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which we started We started planning this show uh, back, you know, before Halloween, and one thing led to another, and uh, and here we are. It's, the, it's January 3rd, but... Uh, the good thing is that we've got additional beers. Now we have five, five, yeah. F- five. Yeah. Um, oh. Yes, we we have five monster cereal beers to to taste in one sitting, which is uh, pretty pretty good. It's like a monster truck rally. <laughs> yeah. Some go, some blow. <laughs> Maybe literally, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to thank uh, Tony uh, Golek of uh, the Chicago area and his friends. Uh, he submitted a couple of beers. Uh, he says, uh, my fellow 212 Brew Club member Brandon and I got together and brewed these beers for my Halloween party. We'd already done a couple of cereal beers in the past and noticed that they needed a little bit more help to bring forward the flavors we wanted from the cereals. So he sent two beers, one with a Frankenberry cereal and one with Count Chocula. So we're going to start with uh, Tony uh, and Brandon's beer. Uh, what And what's the name on there? Did we have the... Uh, oh, that's Celebration... No, yeah. on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Frankenshake, I think is, uh, I would say, is the name of that beer. And it's got a clever, uh, clever uh, label uh, designed by uh, Tony's cousin Kevin. So uh, I'll I'll post a picture of those on the Instagram and such. They're very good, very good uh, illustrations. Yeah, they are cool. They're fun. Uh, so we have the Franken Vice beer, and he says for the Franken Vice beer we mashed one pound of the Frankenberry cereal 
and added it to the boil. We then fermented it with uh, saf brew wheat dry or yeah wheat dry yeast. Once fermentation was complete, we racked it onto a pound of strawberries for a week. The final ABV of the beer is five and a half percent. So, we we cheers before the uh, <laughs> before the recording. So we'll uh, we'll forego that formality. But uh, first, it's a, it's a it's a it's a straw colored beer. And the thing about these beers is that you know the cereals. Every time we you know we brewed with the cereals, they've uh, uh, through the mash and and into the first of the boil, they've uh, lent weird colors but then once fermentation is complete you know the weirdness goes away as far as the colors are concerned so who wants to do first impressions jamie um it's definitely easy drinking there's a subtle strawberry flavor that i'm getting um i don't know if i'm getting much of the cereal but i definitely it just tastes like a really good ale with a you know nice subtle strawberry Mm -hmm. on the back end I got the end of the bottle. I mostly got yeast. <laughs> Do you want to sample mine again? Yeah, I'm kind of like Charlie Brown. It's like I got a rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did the pouring, so you can't blame anybody else. Actually, it's a, it's a nice light ale. I do get just a little bit of strawberry fruitiness in there. So uh, if I didn't know it was strawberries, I might not be able to name them. But I can say that it's nice and light and fruity. And it's just a nice little bit tart mm-hmm. ale. So it's nice. I think my my pour is really tart uh, for me, at least. Uh, I don't know if that's a different thing or if it's just my taste being different. Um, but yeah, I I do love it. Um, the one thing I would say is is kind of interesting, I, I guess, is the aroma. Mm. It, but I don't think that would be something that's avoidable because considering we're working with cereal, <laughs> um, does it does it smell like breakfast? <laughs> yeah, it smells like some kind of breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of my breakfasts. No, I, th- I think it's good. I think th- yeah. I-, I think it's a it's it, I, I, it's not as tart. Maybe your tart tolerance is not, is not like mine. I, I I think that might be it. Um, <laughs> you know, one thing that's that we found in in brewing these cereal beers, and and I brewed a, a batch of beer with the Frankenberry, and we tried it on the show on the video show. And we didn't get much mm-hmm. cereal stuff. We didn't get yeah. much of the fruity flavor. So I think Tony uh, does get extra credit because he did put some more fruit flavor in this beer that otherwise would have just been a nice, normal, clean wheat beer. Yep. 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 Yeah, the fruit was definitely a nice touch. Really appreciate that. Yeah. Very good. So that's one of five. Okay. So, <laughs> so Drew, you don't like tart beers, or you, or you, or, well, or you're sensitive to tart beers. I, I guess, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a lot more like sensitive, as you'd say. But I, I do love tart beers uh, when done right. Okay. Well. well okay. <laughs> this no. next one's mine, so. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> be careful. <laughs> I'll get the water. <laughs> okay. So mine is a. Uh, it's well carbonated. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> Oh well, Steve. That's a Steve pour right there. No, I was I was gentle. <laughs> I was not square. gentle enough. <laughs> Steve's been dinged on the video podcast for his pouring well, ability. Look at that. Mine and Jamie's, but you two guys just came out. Well, there you go. It's it's a beer understand. that's meant for us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this this was meant to be a goza, so I so I so I named it the Booberry Gosta. But <laughs> name it the blueberry Burma shave. <laughs> It'll calm down. Uh, okay, so so what it is is it's it's a two gallon batch. It's two pounds or nine hundred grams of two row, two pounds of nine hundred grams of white wheat malt, uh, one pound or a family sized uh, box of blueberry cereal, and uh, I mashed at. Uh, in three gallons at 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65C for one hour. Uh, and at the end of that mash, I got this wort that was like, you can see it on the video podcast. It was like uh, battleship gray, That's this right. wort. Yep. Uh, and and then uh, I soured it with the uh, good, belly. good belly. Thank you, Jamie. Good bear. <laughs> Should have written it down. The good belly plus shot. <laughs> I split it into two one-gallon uh, jugs and then uh, did one shot in each and used my high-gravity system to hold it at uh, 110 degrees Fahrenheit for three days to sour it. 
And then I brought the wort back together in the kettle, brought it up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, held it there for 15 minutes, and then added one ounce or 28 grams of Rakao. Um, and the uh, starting gravity is 1047, final gravity 1008. I fermented with USO5, so for an ABV of 5.2%. So, how's you've tasted this beer before, Steve. How's it hold, held up? It's held up very well. This is nice. I, I like it uh, because it's a little bit tart. It's it's just to me. It's just a it's it's a, a Berliner Weiss mm. when I drink it. I'm just like, okay, it's a Berliner Weiss. Oh, and I, I didn't didn't say after souring the wort turned bright green in the <laughs> in the little jugs. And now you look at it, and there's a little, if you tilt it, there's just a teeny tinge of green, but not much. You wouldn't notice it if you weren't looking looking at it. So, Drew, what do you think about this one? Well, I think I actually had some of this when I came home, was it October? Mm. Yeah, and uh, I do think it's held up. Um, yeah, it's it's very, very tart, very sour, and, again, not a bad thing. Um, overall, uh, again, the aroma's kind of weird. <laughs> but that's I, I've I've got a sensitive nose, I guess. But uh, yeah, I, I I do like it still. There there is a weird cereally breakfast cereally little, t- little just hint to it. Yeah, it's definitely got that graininess of like when you open a box of cereal. But it's um yeah, yeah like it, it the tartness level of it makes you want to keep drinking more. Um, and it has a, a dr- nice dryness to it as well that I'm I'm getting. But uh. It's got a you know yeah good aroma and very easy drinking and good. And and to my palate, it's not very tart. But I mean, we've had some some. No. <laughs> we've had some beers that'll peel the enamel off your teeth. So, yeah. <laughs> but it is nicely tart. And, and Berliner Weiss, I think, is about the level of tartness that uh, I think you nailed it. Yeah, and um, I, I also kind of I, I really like. There's kind of a graininess. I guess that's the cerealness, but. Uh, those who have listened to me before know that I really like the taste of grain. Mm-hmm. I like to taste grain in my beer for some reason. I love that. And I can pick up a little grain in this beer, and so I think it's really nice. And you're right, the level of tartness is nothing like what we've had before. In fact, you've made some kettle sours that, you know, I'm still, <laughs> I've cleaned my decks with them, <laughs> you know. But uh, but this is really a nice, easy drinker, yeah. nice beer. I'm really happy with this. I think it's gotten a little better as it's been in the bottle. It's bottle condition. I think it's it's uh, gotten a little better over time. I think I'm, I'm happy with this. I, you know, it's such a weird recipe. I don't know if I would do it again. You know, but but it's. I think it's worth doing. It, Something fun to do. Yeah. Might be you know alter the recipe a little bit. Add some fruit as. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, as uh, like Tony did. Yeah, like Tony did. Yeah. Hmm. Be like Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, that's a relief. Okay. It's always a relief when that's I fine. bring out one of my beers and it tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Jamie's next. What do you, what do you, oh, oh. What do you got here, Jamie? Uh, this is my take on the Booberry uh, cereal. It's a kettle soured Berliner Weiss. This is probably one of the most complicated beers I've ever made. <laughs> um, it's got seven pounds of uh, Pilsner, four pounds of white wheat, um, a big family sized box of the Booberry cereal, and a pound of lactose. Oh. I wanted to kind of play off the whole cereal vibe and um, just go with that. I added um, mosaic hops because they tend to impart a little, you know, fruitiness. Some some boob, or blueberry has been perceived there, and then I used the uh, White Labs lactobacillus uh to sour the beer which took about 60 some hours Mm. um to you know achieve the uh, ph level i was going for and then i aged it on uh, two pounds of uh blueberries and this is a five gallon batch and boy it's it's beautiful yeah this is the this is the best looking beer i've ever seen i think (laughs) yeah i was really happy with what the the color because i too had the the gray bath water uh work that that you experienced and when i added the blueberries it definitely changed changed the game was yours green at any point never got green but it was definitely it was gray well you get a z-pack for that (laughs) nothing a little penicillin can't fix right steve (laughs) jamie this is a gorgeous beer this is is an absolutely beautiful beer yeah it's it's pink has a pinkish hue as they say it's almost raspberry it's got a nice Mm -hmm. uh head uh, to it oh it's delicious thank you wow yeah oh my that's super good yeah, no, this is almost almost not tart at all. Do you think? 
Like I get some tartness, but it, there's a little bit, yeah. But there's it's not it's, you know it's the fruit that comes through the fruit, and yeah. then the and I think the lactose, the little bit of milk mm, sugar is sugar. is coming through, and it really just kind of rounds it off. It's not uh, it took took the edge off of it, mm. as it were. Mm. It's super good. Why? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Talk yeah. about how good your beer is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. I need a glitter button. Yeah. 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 It was. Uh, it, it was fun to make, but it was definitely, like I said, the most time-consuming. And uh, you know, it's something that you know I've gotten into kettle sours, and it's been something I've been working on. But yeah, they're definitely not just a uh, quick one day one day process. It was start on a Friday and going into the uh, fermenter m- late Monday evening. So. Well, I like how round the the lactose. You know, a lot of times when you have a beer with a lot of fruit, it's so dry, and especially, you know, if it's a tart berry, you know, you get that tartness, and it's yep. kind of tannic, and it's kind of like it's good, but you know, you know, right. it's a little bit, a little bit too much. This is nice. The the um, like I say, that lactose really rounds it out, and and you know, kind of accentuates the sort of sweetness of the of the fruit, and balances it out really well. I couldn't say it better. I, I mean, that's just really a nice beer. You know what, though, I, w- I would do if you did this again? Now it's kind of going to a blueberry pie to me. Right. Mm. And so I'd almost maybe do just a very tiny amount of allspice, oh. you know, just a little. So it's kind of like you've almost got a blueberry pie here and just, just one more little thing. May, actually, maybe just a little bit of vanilla. Yeah. Just to, it would pull all those play flavors up, together. Pastry kind or, of yeah. Line mm-hmm. of it. I'll say too, you know, I made this back at the end of September, and it's definitely changed, and it's gotten better, in my opinion, the older it, it's got. But yeah, um, if I had to do it again, I would probably, I'd probably add a little bit more blueberry too. Um, I think I could have possibly, you know, just doubled down on the adjuncts period, um, just to really, you know, blow your head off with it. And, and what what kind of malt would you add to get more of a crust character? Oh man. Uh- Victory, maybe special roast. There's some browns too There's that give you kind of like yeah. a uh, like yeah. a graham cracker kind yeah. of. Right. So yeah, something like that maybe. Yeah, anything yeah. that would go to that kind of crackery yeah. place would be you know off the top of my head, and I've had enough mead and beer. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, but going to those biscuit yeah. malts, those that, graham cracker yeah, that's malts. That's a good idea. I mean, this started as the most basic Berliner Weiss grain bill that you know you can. That's pretty traditional. I mean, that's what I what I started mm-hmm. with, and I wanted to bump the ABV up a little bit from a traditional one. They're usually in the you know high threes, low fours, and I wanted this a little bit higher, so it ended at five point two. And I also wanted to mention on Steve's recommendation that I did use the citrus um, imperial organic yeast because that kind of gives you a little they you know as they describe a little funkiness in its own. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to you know w- short of adding like a Brett, wanted to have a funkiness to it as well, mm-hmm. which. I don't know that it got that funky, but it definitely added something with that that citrus mm-hmm. yeast. Yeah, you, you know, a thought occurred to me. I think this would be a good beer for people who don't usually drink beer, mm-hmm. or people who are turned off by the the bitterness and the and the mm-hmm. to the traditional taste of beer. traditional beer. Because I have several friends who I've talked to is like, okay, you know, I don't drink beer because I can't stand the taste of it, or it's you know, it's too. You know, it's too bitter or something, and and you drink this, and it's like you don't get those same characteristics. So, yeah, that's how I am yeah. with Brussels sprouts. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what? Though this reminds me of, although it's much more delicate, and you'll you'll agree with me when you hear this. It reminds me of the New Glarus, uh tart beers, the raspberry tart, the cherry tart. Oh. It's kind of going to that same place, like the strawberry rhubarb, yeah. the serendipity, like yeah. all those things. It's yeah. not as big or as you know, it's not there yet, right? And I don't mean that in a bad way. No, no, it's no. Just, but but that's what this reminds me of. Nuclear makes great beer. Oh man! <laughs> well, that's that's what was in my mind when I said, "What would you add to get more crust?" Because Nuclearis, you know, like the the cherry, the Wisconsin Belgian Red is a yeah. cherry beer, and it tastes like cherry pie because it's got the cherry flavor, and then it's got this malt backbone that is the crust of the pie, and so, I mean. This is yeah. This is a delicious beer, but one way you can make it different uh, is to add more of that crust character. Right. So, would that take it out of style? Do you think, as far as like Berliner Weiss? 
you know, because then you, does it become something else? Well, but we just do 10 minutes of art. <laughs> true, true, <laughs> yeah. true. Fair enough. <laughs> Style, smile. Yeah, smile. <laughs> As they make a good beer and then figure out what to call it later on. <laughs> <laughs> does it taste good, yes or no? <laughs> yeah. But I do wonder about not just the biscuitiness, but also maybe a little bit of carrot pills or something like that to put a little little bit more body into it. Mm-hmm. We're kind of reconstructing this beer because it's really good now, but we're yeah. trying to yeah. turn it into the new Glarus now all of a sudden. <laughs> exactly. But, but yeah. it's fun to play that game. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, this is delicious as That's it so is, I, I, I have to say. You know that we're not we're not nitpicking the beer, saying that it needs to be improved. We're just saying what what could be done different yeah. different to make it a little different. Yeah, and it could totally take it in a completely different direction. Absolutely, but I would agree though. This is a fruit beer for people that don't like beer. Mm-hmm. It's a really good fruit beer, mm-hmm. and a lot of times you're right. I mean, what you said earlier, you know, that's fruit. Mm, yeah, mm-hmm. that's a little tart. Mm-hmm. I remember once a long time ago, I'll tell this little story, <laughs> we were sitting at the Ozark uh, Brew Pub. This mm-hmm. is about 20 years ago, mm-hmm. and it may have been the second brewer they had, and he screwed up, and the lines got dirty, yeah. and so he turned a wheat beer into a <laughs> raspberry or cherry beer, and we sit down and talk to him. He's like, yeah, yeah, the lines were dirty. The beer got infected, so I just put some fruit in it. Yeah. <laughs> and you could tell that's what he had done. Except for it sold like crazy, so they had to keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, the beer soured. It was supposed to be just a, a wheat beer, and it soured. <laughs> yeah. So he threw a bunch of fruit in it. He was ahead of his time. It, tur- yeah. it turned out to if be it, if it works. It, it turned out to be a pretty good beer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, nothing. It's, it's something you don't want to do on accident, for sure. Well, we still got more beers to cover. Mm. Yeah, we got two more, two more okay. Count Chocula beers. Okay, now we're gonna totally screw my palate up. Okay. Oh yeah, I've got. Right. I should go get some water to reset. Yeah, rinse, go rinse. I'll, I'll talk about my, my you beer. Need an oyster cracker. <laughs> <laughs> Just grab a handful of uh, biscuit malt in there. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. This is my. This is from uh, 2017. I was going to say last year, but now we're in uh, 2000. Oh, clean. Uh, I was going to give you a completely clean. Oh, is that a clean one? <laughs> Sorry. We got more cups. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, this is my Count Chocula beer that I brewed uh, in October of 2017. So it'll be interesting to see if this holds up. It's a milk stout. Uh, it was a six-gallon batch, 10 pounds or 4.5 kilograms of Maris Otter, 8 ounces or 226 grams of brown malt, the same amount of chocolate malt, the same amount of black patent malt, uh, 1 pound or 450 grams of lactose, added 30 minutes before the end of the boil, and then 17.8 ounces or 504 grams of Count Chocula. Uh, I mashed at 150 degrees Fahrenheit for 65, uh, 65C for 75 minutes. Uh, and I just bittered for 60 minutes with 2 ounces or 56 grams of U.S. Fuggle. Uh, 1069 starting gravity, 1022 final gravity, which is high, but it's a milk stout, so it's got the lactose in there. Fermented with Safael 04, SO4, ABV 6.3%. So this beer is uh, over a year old. It, it was I we liked it when we when we tasted it on the show. I haven't smelled or tasted it yet. Steve, did it hold up? It held up very well. I can't remember what it was like a year ago, but I can tell you that tonight it's very nice. I'm and the fact that it's a year old, it's really delicious. Mm. What do you think? Well, milk stouts are honestly, I would say they're my favorite type of beer as mm. of now. Um, and this is no exception. This is a very, very good beer. I would say, you know, um, I would say this is something that I would I would pick up at, you know, the you know, liquor store near my apartment in Seattle or elsewhere. I would <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I do like the, the flavor of it. While it's uh, compared to other milk stouts, it's it's got a, a kind of a weird kind of turn to it. I I, I guess that's one way I, I would describe it. I'm not sure. It's a little sharper than I remembered. That that is yeah that is a one way I would I would put it. Um, but other than that, it is definitely a milk stout. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a slight bitterness that I get on the very front end, but as it sits on your tongue, the chocolate really starts to be pronounced and uh, yeah um that's what i'm getting as it i just my mouth feels like it's coated with chocolate yeah. um the longer that you know it's been mm-hmm. on my palate um i'd say i didn't have it fresh but i'd say you know if it was this good when it was first done then you've got 
did nothing wrong. <laughs> it reminds me a little bit of those little Hershey's uh, dark chocolate mm. nugget things. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah, it's a, it's more of a more of at this point kind of a bitter chocolate than than a sweet chocolate. Uh, I remember it being more sweet when we had it uh, that way back in 2017. That I don't remember, but it still <laughs> seems kind of sweet to me and not as bitter as my first marriage. Oh. <laughs> hey! That's a joke. <laughs> a beer all week. Yeah, <laughs> beer all week. Beer all week. Well, it's, I mean, it's not, it wasn't contaminated, I can say. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a gusher by any means, and there's, you know, no nastiness in there. Right. So, you know, yeah. kudos to the dishwasher method of, uh, you know, sanitizing bottles, I guess. No but, uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's, I think it's pretty tasty. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah, um, I, it, you, you did say it was more of a bitter chocolate than a sweet chocolate, and I agree. It's it's more of a insert chocolate here that I don't even remember than uh, than a Hershey's chocolate or whatever. Um, See, I think it's pretty sweet. Huh. I I don't know. I think my palate may be different because because several times tonight we've had you know people like it's dry. It's and I'm like that's really sweet to me. Right. So I, I don't know. Maybe the vodka's catching up to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're, we're not responsible for your pre, pre-game activities, right. whatever. The, <laughs> well, the Chiefs are on a roll. <laughs> oh, it's actually pretty good. The more I sip yeah. on it, the more uh, the more I like it. Um, all right. Okay. Now we have one final one final beer. I'll let you do the. Uh, this is the. Uh, what's the name of this one? This one's Tony's Count Stout. Uh, he says, for the Count Stout, uh, I mashed two pounds of Count Chocula cereal, ooh, so two boxes, separately from the grain bill and added it to the boil. I also added one pound of 100% cocoa powder to the boil Whoa. and half a pound of lactose. I fermented it with SO4 English ale yeast, and the beer finished at 10% ABV, so... Before this I is do, a before big I beer anything, to finish on. Before I do anything, this is probably my favorite aroma of the night. Just oh, there you go. Yeah. Nobody's had, nobody's sipped it yet. It's a big beer. <clears throat> of the beers that we've drank, which it, since it's ten percent, I'm not surprised. Mm-hmm. But it's, I can really smell the alcohol in it mm-hmm. in a good way. It, I mean, I can really tell. Boy, that's a big beer. I'm boy, a, does. I almost get like um from the aroma like a, a banana. Anybody else picking that up? Or well, maybe it's from the the English, um, yeah. the English yeast. You know that yeah. estery. Yeah. Um, a little bit, yeah. Wow. It smells pretty good though. No kidding. I really like it. Really like it. I, I'll have to drink a little bit more to <laughs> to fully get my thoughts. Wow. Mm. Is that a banana in your beer? Are you glad to see me? <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Very yeah. chocolatey. Very chocolatey. Very chocolatey. Love it. Love, um, it. Love, it. Love it. But it's not like motor oil. It's got it's it's uh, deceptively drinkable. I would mm-hmm. say. Yeah, um, for beer this big, I def- I'm a big fan of stouts, and I I tend to like the really motor oil, viscous, mm. thick stouts. And this is a little bit thin for on on body, but. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely a big beer and it's well well done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I mean it's thin thinner than say like a what's the uh, Oscar Blues uh, like, ten oh, fifty. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, it, it takes me a little while to get through a ten fifty because it's just so big. <laughs> it's like a milkshake. This is more drinkable than that. Yeah, I'm al- I'm also surprised. Well, not surprised isn't the right word, but. There's a nice roastiness to it mm-hmm. that is a little bit reminiscent of like a Guinness export mm-hmm. stout, you know, the mm-hmm. ones that are kind of have that little bitter edge to right, them. Yeah, this is this is just got that nice roasty kind of burnt coffee thing going a little bit. That's really nice. That's exactly what I was thinking just now. Is that I I almost didn't know, notice a coffee taste in it for a while, and then I had another sip of it, and I thought. That does have a little bit of a hint of coffee in it. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm weird, but it just—it's to me, it's like a chocolate banana Foster's. It's yeah. like that. No, that that I'm just, you know maybe it's the lactose, maybe it's but I, I I just I'm perceiving some kind of banana flavor, and that's what it just reminds me of like a pastry pastry stout, mm-hmm. um, and that's what I I'm picking up. 
Yeah, there is. I mean, the, I I think it is the yeast. There's a there is a fruity uh, character to it that is complementary. Yeah. Uh, it's delicious. I think it. Mm. I think it's. Banana. I think it's. A, I think it's a winner. I think. I think. I would drink any and all of these beers. I think that that they're all good. One question is: Is there one that shows off the cereal? Is there one? That that says, oh yeah, it was worth it to go to the trouble and extra expense to buy a box of cereal and use it in these beers. I would say that of all of them, if you didn't tell me that there was those cereals in there, I don't think any of us would know that there was. I would say your stout was the most chocolatey, and I felt like I got some of the marshmallow, ah. um, in which Count Chocolate is one of my favorite cereals. Um, that if if we were to discern, but without the power of suggestion i wouldn't say this guy used <laughs> count chocula right and and that's something i i've never really had any of these cereals just by themselves except for boo berry which i sampled a bit that uh dad had it whenever um he would he'd brewed the stuff but um yeah i i think if you would have given this to me like at at a a bar or a brewery or something and didn't mention it had cereal in it i just think it tasted interesting but i think you know, I, I think there's some kind of um, there's some kind of element that the cereal would add that if you took out the cereal, it, it suddenly would become a completely different beer, which is why I think I think it, it would be worth it just to to continue using the cereals and the, these recipes just for that kind of you know effect, I guess. I am going to be just the opposite. Okay. Mm. And I'm going to say that I think the novelty of this is a lot of fun, and it's w- kind of why we're in the hobby, because you just want to play around and have fun with new flavors and experiences. But like Jamie, I couldn't ex- I couldn't um, say that any of these had a, a box of cereal in them. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure what effect that really makes at the end of the day. But it's fun to do. Um, the one that I think was the most expressive of the moment was the Jamie's blueberry, and but that may have been from the blueberries, not from the not from the box of cereal. Uh, but I would challenge you guys for next year because I'll be a year older to make one with more bran in it, because <laughs> <laughs> Muselix, <laughs> Mus- Muselix, Uncle Sam's pale ale, something like that. We'll do a prune stout. <laughs> Pr- 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 prune stout. <laughs> Steve's breakfast stout. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> <laughs> Hurry while you wait. <laughs> well, I think I think that oh, no. I think that maybe my maybe my booberry I think had sort of the the most influence to me of the cereal, but it was a weird influence. So yeah. <laughs> it was like there's a little twang to that, you know. I think that may be the booberry. <laughs> maybe like, there's maybe there's a reason why people don't use cereal in, in brewing, <laughs> but you know, it's fun. I mean, yeah. I think Steve. I think that you you got to the nugget of it. It's fun to say here. Here's a here's a beer that I brewed with blueberry cereal or Count Chocula or Frankenberry or whatever, and I and, or there's another one called Yummy Mummy, which apparently has a different connotation, like in Australia. So <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Australians. <laughs> Don't Blow me out back. Yeah, don't, yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't, go, don't Google yummy mummy unless you're – so uh, anyway. Uh, no, I think they're worth doing. I think yeah. – especially if they're delicious beers. Uh, what the heck? So maybe maybe next time we can time it a little better, whether it's a little closer to Halloween. Yeah. But, Jamie, I, I certainly appreciate your contribution. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. And Tony and uh, Tony and Brandon and Kevin and everybody up in Chicago at the, at the 212 Brew Club – up there shout out to y'all thanks for sending the beers wonderful stuff and and drew thanks for joining us here this evening thank you i I love being on this and uh thanks to steve for your hospitality you're welcome james come and visit me anytime (laughs) at (laughs) stevesbrewshop.com well thanks again drew steve and jamie for tasting and big thanks to Tony and Brandon for brewing up their beers up in Chicago. That was that was a lot of fun. Um, and in listening back to the conversation, it sounded like we were really picking on Jamie's beer. <laughs> I really liked it. I liked it a lot. In fact, I think it was probably my favorite of the flight. Uh, it was delicious just the way it was. 
and I would have been very happy to have brewed it. I just think we were just wondering how it would have been different with maybe a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But uh, just like home brewers, to never be satisfied with anything. But maybe that's good. If you have brewing questions, show suggestions, or just want to say howdy, write to James at basicbrewing.com or just fill out the contact form at basicbrewing.com. Please don't forget to tell us where you're from. Thanks to everybody supporting us through our Patreon page. Special goodies coming your way and already on the Patreon page. Check that out at patreon.com slash basicbrewing. Be sure to check out our DVDs, Extract Brewing and Partial Mashing, Stepping into All Crane, Low Tech Lagering and Decoction Mashing, and Introduction to Wine Kits. You can find them all on our site. Get a free Basic Brewing bottle opener with any DVD combo, and you can check out our Basic Brewing shirts in the store, too. You can find our logbooks. We can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. Check all that out at basicbrewingshop.com. That's all until next time. Until then, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm James Spencer, production help for Basic Brewing Radio, and our website is provided by Kelly Dotson. Basic Brewing Radio is a production of Active Voicing. We'll talk to you next time, everybody. So long. So long.